Hello, and welcome back to the definitive Starship review series without access to a proper table, where today we are looking at the glorious Doomsday Machine, batteries not included. <laughs> Actually, I do I do have the batteries. I will be showing that off. It's a lovely ship. It's somewhat of a divisive ship. I don't know about divisive, but you either love it or you hate it. I've always loved it. Uh, my partner, I think they thought it was kind of dumb when they saw it. The big cornucopia of death. I remember it being, like, pretty scary when I was a kid. But then again, I also distinctly remember I never really watched the original series. I kind of sat there under a blanket or behind the sofa, which is, the original series is not scary. Like, maybe there's one or two scenes in the whole thing that, for a little kid, might be kind of scary. But, uh... Yeah, I, I digress. Before we get too far into the review though, I have to say that I am part of the Eagle Moss Affiliate Program, which means that if you choose to purchase this model because of this video, there is a link in the description. That is an affiliate link, meaning that I will get a 7% commission on the sale of the model. I'm allowed to say whatever the heck I want about these ships, and I still have to purchase them with my own money, but just be aware that there's a monetary incentive for me to tell you to go buy these ships. Not the batteries though, those are, those are on you. And after briefly sucker punching my camera, let's get into the size comparison, where actually this doesn't look too bad. I mean, I know it's horribly out of scale, but with just an original, this is the cage, uh, but like standard size Enterprise, this is not too bad. And yes, don't worry, we will be turning on the lights. For something slightly bigger and more anachronistic though, uh, here it is next to the Strange New Worlds Enterprise. Uh, which again is the same size as XL, by the way. It's the same size as any other XL, this kind of enterprise. Over in Discovery Land, um, we're very, very orange. Why are we getting so orange? Boo is joining us now because I've remembered my camera really hates blue models and I need white to vaguely try and keep the color correction from going orange. But yes, the a uh, doomsday machine is approximately as long as the um, Discovery D7, that's the word for it. It's definitely a good size model, a good size cornucopia. You could drink a lot from it if it weren't for the fact that it didn't actually go all the way down. And finally, the wingspan of the scimitar is slightly shorter actually than the doomsday machine, um, which is always a good sign. Again, is a special size. It's it's a really pretty good size model. I don't doesn't need to be any bigger and it also like any smaller the gaping maw at the front might be a bit too small. But yes, the doomsday machine. Ah, uh, you know what? Shall we turn on the lights? I've never actually done this before. I've bought the batteries specifically for this video. They arrived today. It takes two LR41 batteries which you probably don't own. I know because no one in my family owned them. Um, they're not, I don't think they're like a particularly standard one, but they're super cheap. I paid like four bucks for this pack of 10 on Amazon and you could get 20 for like five bucks or something. I just, I don't need this many <laughs> batteries. And uh, if you ever forget the magazine that comes with this model tells you what kind of batteries it needs, but it is two LR41. And if we take the Doomsday Machine, and you'll see there's this little hatch right here. We just pop this off. Um, it's magnetic. You can see on the bottom, it'll just attach to the screws. And you can't put it in backwards, which is always nice. It'll just very easily snap on and come off. You'll see the standard circuit board uh, with the two battery slots in it and a button to turn it on and off. Uh, that doesn't press when you put this in. I kind of wish you could maybe press this in to toggle it. But, uh, hey, you know, it's it's all right. You don't want a button sticking out of the bottom, which is important. And I should say that these are not the same batteries that the ISS Chiron takes. Those were like a C something. But if you own the ISS Chiron, it's not the same batteries. You will have to buy these LR41s separately. And so if we, you might ask how easy is it to put the batteries in? I don't know because I've never done it and I'm struggling to open this through a viewfinder. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. That took a while. So yes, you, you unscrew this bit, um, and you see the positive and negative, right? I'm being dumb, uh, and that's for the LED, is the positive side and the negative side, which is very important. If you ever have to replace the LED, that's how you do it. 
Um, it doesn't actually tell you how the batteries do it. Maybe the magazine says. I had to look this up in a video. But the flat side, so um, this side, the positive side, it says plus on it. It's going to be flat, and the bottom side's a bit bumpier. That side goes up. So this is the flat side, this is the negative side. And you should know, because when the button is extended, that's actually the LED on, and so it should go on right away, and pushing in the LED is the, the LED off. The flat part of the battery, the positive side, goes on top. Don't pay any attention to these, it's positive and negative, and you will need a Phillips head screwdriver. I, a relatively small one for the screws, but I, I think uh, you know, you probably will own one because even if it's too big, you can probably get it to work. There we go. I've screwed it back in. Uh, that does appear to be working. It's going to look, oh, okay. That looks pretty cool under the professional lighting kit. But let me just go ahead and uh, seal this back up. Yeah, you can't unfortunately press this in to have the buttons work. Uh, well, I guess out is on, which is a little weird. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and god now look at that i've never seen this before that's really cool under the professional lighting kit let's turn that off and now the lighting is much worse but in a normal environment that looks fantastic under the blue the viewfinder in person i think it looks better from the sides you could definitely see even face down you know kind of reminds me of the guardian of forever a bit you can kind of see the led point but around it is fantastic. I'm actually going to try and turn off all the lights now. Here we go. I can't do anything about my laptop, which is why you're going to see that slight glow. Um, but yeah, that is that is a pretty cool effect with the light. It looks amazing on the viewfinder. Uh, straight down the barrel, it's not the best. Um, I kind of like that softer glow. I wonder if you could maybe just put something in the center. Um, to diffuse that light a bit just in front of the LED or like a diffusion cap. I bet that would look fantastic, but it's still a lovely little effect. And especially when you don't catch that core of the LED, it looks quite nice. Not You don't really get the doomsday machine effect in pitch black because you can't see the doomsday machine, but uh, hey, it's actually not the worst flashlight in the world. It's also not the best, but it's not the worst. I have no idea how long the battery will last um, just running forever, like if you always have it on on your shelf. There's probably not much room to put a circuit or anything in there, but if you bust open the model, maybe drill in here or something, uh, you might be able to fit like a time sensor or something. Um, just, just something else to get a bit more control over the light. So maybe it's only on at night or install a clapper or something. That would be cool if you could get a clapper in this. If you go ahead and turn the light off for a second, you can see that um, it's done with kind of a plasticky. It's plastic, clear, feels kind of weird. Almost vomit colored plastic so to have everything bounce off um, and look quite nice, diffuse and different. And it, it does look like it's almost uh, the really dark thing just being lit up by that, um, that light. If you have electric skills, it might be fun messing around, seeing what like an ultrabyte LED would do, or maybe something like that, uh, like a diffusion thing. But that's just the base effect you're going to get with the model. Then looking over the whole thing, uh, it's just the cornucopia shape with this one texture, pretty similar to what V'ger had. And if you look, it's just the blue, a lot like the remastered, I believe, not the um, original Doomsday Machine, which I will say, I don't really like the look of the original Doomsday. I think I've only ever watched the original series on um, the remastered, originally on I think like DVD HD or something, some crazy format like that, that my dad bought when it came out. Other than this bit, which it kind of makes sense to be there, uh, the seams are pretty good. You can kind of see a seam here, but because of the darkness um, on the model, it looks more natural. Um, and maybe even more intentional part of the manufacturing process. There does appear it looks a bit like a seam, but it's actually not just when these pieces kind of almost fit into each other telescope style. There is an odd seam here with the tail um, that then connects to the big bit. I guess that's just how they're getting this plate on there when, um, when yeah, it can't be connected to this. So that's how this big plate is going on there. 
it's probably is hollow in there. Um, like if you did want to unscrew this drill in here, you probably could fit a fair amount of um, like an Arduino. You could probably fit an Arduino in there, maybe something smaller as well, uh, and just run some basic circuitry. Uh, I don't know if your batteries might be a problem, but under there, ah, who knows? If you're really dedicated enough, you could probably build something fancy. Yeah, the main selling point is the light, which again, let's just turn off the film lighting, is a lovely, almost Halloween-y effect. You know, it kind of gives that jack-o'-lantern, you know, a lot of Halloween decorations, the kind of cheap ones are just an LED. I don't want to call this cheap because the effect doesn't really look cheap, uh, just with the, the plasticky stuff. And the model itself is... The high quality has always, as I said, I've had this without the light, just like this for years since it came out and just never bought a light. Um, that actually on its own on the viewfinder looks pretty good. It is a lot darker in person. I cannot see in there as well as I can in the camera. But with the light, yeah, it's got that kind of mysterious Halloween-y vibe that uh, you know, I'm gonna try and take a photo with my phone. Yeah, something like on my phone right now, or even this just on the camera, is a bit more of, um, close to what you get in person. Looking down the barrel, it's a lot brighter in the camera, but still a lovely, lovely little effect. I will say, though, when the light is on, if you look at it sideways, can I get it on the camera? There, there's a very specific angle where it looks like you can see, um, just the basic LED, through the slit. You could cover that up if you really want, but if you've got the light on, you're probably not looking at the side. And so yeah, that looks gorgeous on the camera. The Again, the light is a little stronger on the camera. I think an ultra bright LED, if that's not what that is, would do this model wonders. But I think, nah, light off. I think that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about this model, just ask in the description. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm loving this. Um, I mean, it is pretty good in person, but on the camera, I'm adoring this. So if you, if you want this model for photo shoots, and hey, I forgot what I was gonna do. Here we go. If you want this model for photo shoots, this would be... You couldn't do better. But even in person, it's a lovely little effect with or without the LEDs. And yeah, if you have any questions about this model, just ask below in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want me to review a specific model, again, just ask. I'm more likely to own it than not. And this channel's got quite a backlog as well of reviews. I might have already done it even. Just ask. I'll do it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.